Good evening, everyone. So we're going to look at the First of Thessalonians, chapter four. Uh, the chapter divides quite neatly into two parts, uh, verses one to twelve, uh, the uprightness of our walk, and verses thirteen to eighteen, the comfort of the resurrection. And the chapter starts with the uh, the word furthermore. Uh, so there's a reference to what has gone before. So we look at uh, verses 11 to the end of the previous chapter. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. So he wants to be able to go to see them again. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you. So he wants you to increase and abound, and that comes through in the fourth chapter. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Establish our hearts unblameable. The great blessing of the truth is that our sins are forgiven and our faith is counted for righteousness. He is going to establish our hearts unblameable. There is going to be no condemnation, as he said in the letter to the Romans, to them that are in Christ Jesus. So, following on from that, he says... Furthermore then, furthermore is the, the same as in the uh, second letter in chapter 3 and verse 1 where he says finally. Um, and uh, so it's, it's something extra uh, to what he's said before but he's, uh, he's making uh, the, this point. Following on from that, then, furthermore then we beseech you uh, the word beseech in chapter 5 and verse 12 um, we beseech you brethren to know them which labour among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you so he beseeches them and th there's, there is uh, another word for beseech in, in the verse as we shall see in a moment he, he wants them to well, first of all, he says, um, as ye have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more in this first one. In chapter uh, 5, uh, he goes on to say, uh, I beseech you to know them which labour among you. Uh, and there's the exhortation of getting to know brethren and sisters and knowing particularly those that are responsible in the ecclesia so that there is a, a, an a affinity between all the brethren and sisters. Uh, in, he goes on to say, I uh, beseech you brethren and exhort you uh, by the Lord Jesus. And that word uh, exhort uh, can also mean beseech. Uh, it has a, quite a wide meaning. It is quite close to the word comforter, uh, paraclesis. Um, there's, it's somebody that stands beside uh, to, to help uh, and to uh, in, in harmony. In chapter 5 and verse 14, uh, he says, now we exhort you, that's the same word again, uh, brethren, warn them that are unruly, unruly comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. There's a, an exhortation to be interested and to seek to improve and to help brethren and sisters to keep in the right way uh, that we... Um, we warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient to all men. So there's a, an exhortation 
to whole ecclesia to work together and to build one another up. In chapter 3 uh, and verse 2, uh, he says, He sent Timotheus, our brother, uh, he, uh, and minister of God, and our fellow labourer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. The same word again. To establish you, we sent Timotheus. Ah. Uh, when we could no longer forbear, it says in verse 1, uh, we thought it, it good to be left in Athens alone, but he sent Timothy. He'd, he'd had to flee from Berea. Uh, and he was worried about this young ecclesia in Thessalonica. And he sends Timothy back to see how they've got on. And so, in verse 7 of this third chapter, he says, Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. So the Thessalonian Ecclesia had been a source of comfort to Paul in his walk. Uh, verse uh, 6 he says, But now when Timotheus came uh, from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and love, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. There's a, a fellow feeling between Paul and the Ecclesia at Thessalonica. When Timotheus came to us and brought us good tidings, we get some idea of the extent of this blessing if we go back to the record in Acts. I want to go to the Acts chapter 18 now, uh, which is the time uh, when Paul came to Corinth. Acts chapter 18 and verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. <coughs> Now, in the first letter to the Corinthians, and chapter 2, you get some idea of his state of mind as he went from Athens to Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. And if it just compare that with the speech that he made in Athens quoting their poets he's speaking to the centre of the uh, culture of the Greek empire as it were uh, and he came to Corinth not with excellency of speech or of wisdom for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling he's really disappointed at the response that he had in Athens and he's really despondent when he goes to Corinth back in Acts chapter 18 then and at verse 5 we read uh, he's got to uh, Corinth he's, he's in this despondent state uh, verse 5 and when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed he shook his raiment and so on it gave him a new lease of life that was the extent of the comfort that he had received from the good report of the Thessalonian Ecclesia who had suffered at the hands of their brethren uh, as he uh, says uh, in the letter to the Thessalonians so they were a source of comfort to him and the chapter uh, chapter 4 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 ends with that same word uh, wherefore 
comfort one another with these words. Uh, Chapter 5 and verse 11. Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. What a harmony he is is inculcating in this ecclesia. Working together, comforting, strengthening one another in the way of truth. And so he goes on to say in in verse 1 of chapter 4 uh, we exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as we, ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God so ye would abound more and more. Please God. <coughs> Romans chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh, we've got this exhortation to be spiritual uh, implied in that statement. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 8 he says so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God he's saying to the Thessalonians uh, to to walk and to please God Uh, again in the letter to the Hebrews we're well known without faith it is impossible to please God here's the exhortation to to walk and to please God And then he says, so you would abound more and more. In verse 1 of chapter 4. So they're they're on the right way. Uh, But they're they're, they're to grow in that way. Uh, And verse 10 says, indeed, you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we we beseech your brethren that ye increase. Same word again. Uh, abound more and more and again it's growing in the truth the ecclesia growing together what an exhortation is here then verse 2 of chapter 4 we know what commandments I gave, we gave you by the Lord Jesus the uh, charge that was given to the Philippian jailer Uh, was sufficient for him to put them in the inmost prison uh, when uh, so that word charge is the same as commandments here is something that is uh, given a responsibility to them you know what commandments we gave you uh, by the Lord Jesus the quotation is Acts chapter 16 verse 24 having received this charge uh, he put them into the inner, inner prison And verse 3 then, he goes on, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. This is the will of God. We could spend the rest of the evening on the will of God. You just think what's involved here. Uh, The will of God. Chapter 5 and verse 18 Uh, it's multifaceted is this will of God in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you chapter sorry Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36 for ye have need of patience that is, after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. All right, so you continue in that right way. Uh, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 talks about uh, proving uh, that acceptable will of God. Jesus says in Mark chapter 3 and verse 35, He that does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. It's a wonderful exhortation here, doing the will of God. And we have received a great blessing. John chapter 1 and verse 11. Jesus, the Logos made flesh, 
He came to his own, his own realm or kingdom, and his own people, uh, the Jews, received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It's the will of God, by the will of God, that we are the children of the living God. Uh, John chapter 6, uh, the, just picking uh, a short passage in, in a whole chapter really that is dealing with this. Uh, chapter 6 and verse 38. For I came, I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. This is the Father's will, that we should attain to eternal life, brethren and sisters. And verse 40 goes on to say, And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up up the last day. And of course that's in harmony with the theme of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, is it not? Raise him up at the last day. We'll be looking at that in the second part of the chapter so this is the will of God even your sanctification uh, I believe that the fundamental uh, meaning of sanctification is separation uh, the uh, Gesenius uh, says that it should be, no it's not Gesenius um, the definition that I got was uh, of purification well Let's uh, that we separate ourselves to the work um, and the will of God. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. Verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honour. Uh, and verse 7, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Same word again. <coughs> the elevated nature of the life of the ecclesia in Christ. See how he's trying to build them up and lift up their minds and their thoughts. And our thoughts, of course even our sanctification. And so, uh, verse, uh, and continuing uh, in that, and that ye should abstain from fornication. <laughs> the, the contrast between what we should be doing and what we shouldn't, we should certainly abstain from fornication or anything like that. Chapter 5 and verse 22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. There's a completely new outlook needed compared with the people in the world. And so, verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honour. To possess. Uh, the, in Luke chapter 21 and verse 19 Jesus says in your patience possess ye your souls it's holding on in the time of trial that we should hold to the truth and we shall uh, hold on to uh, the great hope of everlasting life in the kingdom uh, verse 5 not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. 
You've got the contrast in John 17. His prayer just before he was crucified. This is life eternal. That they might know thee. The only true God. And Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The Gentiles which know not God. Brothers and sisters we do know him. And we should get to know him better and better. Day by day, by our acquaintance with the scriptures and our application to the, of those scriptures in our lives. Again, a great contrast between those in the truth and those outside. Uh, verse 6, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter that he shouldn't defraud. To take advantage of, uh, basically that word defraud means... <coughs> Because, verse, uh, continuing the, in the verse, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. God is the one who will deal with those that do evil. Let us see that our dealings with him, or his dealings with us, are the exaltation, the protection that comes from putting our trust in him and the keeping of his uh, in his way as we also have forewarned you uh, and testified uh, they've been told uh, what they should do and we it's there abundantly there in the scriptures uh, and verse uh, 7 goes on to say it's not called us to uncleanness but unto holiness uh, uh, an elevated way of life uh, verse 8 he therefore that despiseth despiseth not man but God who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit despiseth rejecteth that it's the despising the condemnation of Esau when he sold his birthright for a mess of pottage thus he despised the birthright we read in the scriptures and that uh, is a, is, that word is used constantly uh, for those uh, who have rejected the truth through the scriptures and so he goes on to say verse 9 but as touching brotherly love ye need not that I write unto you Philadelphia the word is, is related to filio affection for ye yourselves are taught of God to love agape one another so you've got this natural affection which should be there you won't have agape without affection uh, but it goes beyond affection it's a, it's a self-sacrificial love that puts the well-being of another before the ourselves what a blessing it is to be able to love one another and what a, a lovely ecclesia uh, it would be if we as an ecclesia uh, carried out uh, these principles Verse 10, indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you brethren that ye increase more and more. All of Macedonia including Philippi and uh, Apollonia and Amphipolis and uh, all the rest of the uh, places that are mentioned in the uh, area of Macedonia. Uh, but it, it wasn't just there, it, it went on uh, beyond that, their love, one for another, uh, was uh, well known. And so we beseech, we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. So, the fact that you've done it, it isn't enough. You carry on, build on it, building up on it. The build, a really solid uh, ecclesia uh, on a good foundation that sheds forth the light around and shows how the truth should change our lives. 
And so he goes on to say in verse 11, and that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Paul was a real example of that, of course. He didn't ask for contributions from the ecclesia when he taught them. He worked with his own hands. He was a tent maker. And he earned his living while he was teaching them the truth. That ye study to be quiet and do your own business and to work with your own hands. He was asking them to do, he wasn't, wasn't asking them to do something that he didn't do. And verse 12, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Walk honestly. (coughs) Romans chapter 13 and verse 13 has this word honestly. Romans 13 verse 13 Let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfil the lusts thereof. (coughs) Walk honestly. And the yeah, the only other time that that Greek word is used is at the end of the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 14, uh, and verse 40, when it says, that all things be done decently and in order. What a, an ideal is set there before the ecclesia. And so we have the, that first part of the chapter, is the uprightness of our walk. And what an exhortation to that uprightness is there. And now we come to the comfort of the resurrection. Uh, Verse 13. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as uh, as others which have no hope. Them which are asleep... In Acts chapter 7 and verse 60, the last verse of the chapter, we read of Stephen uh, that he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now, we know what that means. But it's actually spelled out for us in chapter 22 and verse 20 uh, when Paul, referring to this incident, And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. So... Uh, It's talking about his death. The scripture says he fell asleep. And that is a wonderful expression that we have in the brotherhood, I think, is that uh, those who who die in the ecclesia fall asleep. And so uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, we see the, the language as you go through re- relating to uh, the resurrection, but of course it's, uh, it's those that have uh, died before. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 6, um, after that he was seen about uh, 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Uh, verse 18, They also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Uh, Verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Uh, And then verse 51. Behold I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. And it may be 
that some of us will not sleep but will be changed uh, in at the time of the judgment and the resurrection. The language is there. It's um, in chapter 4 and verse 13. Uh, Revelation, uh, sorry, Thessalonians 4, verse 13, we've got them which are asleep. Verse 14, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Uh, verse 15, uh, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that they which are al- we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not come before them which are asleep. Uh, so, We've got that language being used. Uh, Those that have died, uh, we should not sorrow, uh, even as others which have no hope. Uh, The hope, uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labour of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Chapter uh, 1 of verse 3 2 verse 19 uh, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming as related to uh, the coming of Christ uh, and chapter 5 and verse 8 but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation. This will be our defence against the attacks of those that come against us. Uh, uh, the, for a helmet, the hope of salvation. And so we do have a hope that we don't sorrow. Yes, we do sorrow because uh, we've lost a loved one uh, and for the time being uh, we're going to have to cope without them. But we don't sorrow as others that have no hope because we have a hope that we shall see them again. And so verse uh, 14, if we believe or have faith uh, that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And notice how often it's, it's the Father that is involved will God bring with him? Yes, Jesus is the Saviour. Or really, Jesus is the one through whom God is the Saviour. Uh, and it's, it's something that we we have to beware of, I think, because uh, around us there are people that tend to concentrate uh, on Jesus. Uh, but it, it is God that has done these things. It's God that has provided him through whom Uh, we have salvation. And so he says, he died and rose again. We believe that he died. We believe that he rose again. Even so, uh, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So, we've got that great hope before us. Verse 15 For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. It's uh, the word prevent is accurately correct. It comes from the uh, the Latin which means to come before. Uh, Prevent means from the word means to come. Uh, to come before. So basically uh, that's the meaning of the word. Uh, We generally uh, nowadays use it in a different sense but that's really the the meaning of the word. We shall not come before them which are asleep. 4 verse 16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So the Lord himself In Joshua chapter 22 and verse 23, talking about the uh, 
the pillar and the, the altar that have been built by the, the tribes on the eastern side. And it says that we have built us an altar to turn from following Yahweh uh, or if to offer thereon burnt offering or meat offering or to offer peace offerings thereon. No, that's not what we're after. Let the Lord himself require it. So um, <clears throat> he let Yahweh himself require it. He is the one uh, who will do it himself. And then in today's reading, in Isaiah chapter 7, uh, he says in verse 14, Ahaz wouldn't accept, wouldn't ask for a sign. Uh, verse uh, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So God was going to provide uh, the sign for them and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout again from heaven the spirit descended uh, from heaven on the Lord Jesus uh, at his baptism Jesus is the bread which was sent from heaven the true bread which came from heaven Paul talking about the occasion on just outside Damascus he talks about in Acts chapter 26 and verse 13 as a light which came from heaven in Revelation chapter 10 and verse 1 it talks about an angel with a rainbow about his head coming from heaven uh, and in this uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 10 he says and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead so he's going to come uh, from heaven uh, and chapter uh, sorry the second epistle chapter 1 and verse 7 it talks about and you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven apocalypse from heaven um, with his mighty angels he's going to come he's going to come literally from heaven uh, in his case but he's going to come to raise the dead ultimately he's going to come with a shout it's the uh, the word is, is a command it'll come with a command with the archangel um, and again uh, the voice of the archangel uh, there's the archangel uh, uh, Michael that is spoken of uh, in Jude verse 9 so we've got the angelic host involved with the Lord Jesus and with the trump of God uh, the trumpet shall sound uh, and the dead shall be raised uh, incorruptible we read in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 but Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 19 might be worth just referring to in relation to this uh, trumpet um, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 19 he says verse 18 you have not come unto the mount which might be touched and that burned with fire and all with blackness and darkness and temper the, the manifestation of power frightening power and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more this trumpet is going to be a terrible sound for the people of the world going to be a glorious sound for us brethren and sisters in the resurrection from the dead and so it says that the dead in Christ shall rise first but then verse 17 then we which are alive and remain shall be snatched away 
The word means to take by force. There's no up involved uh, in the uh, in the meaning of the word. Uh, when uh, Philip was caught away and was found at Azotus, that's the same word that's used here. And when they came to take him by force, uh, we read uh, it's a, the same word again. They shall be snatched away together with them. There's no the in clouds to meet the Lord in air uh, and air isn't heaven uh, the occasion where we get the use of that word in the uh, Greek in the narrative is in Acts chapter 22 and verse 23 uh, and you'll see that it's not talking about heaven at all um, they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air. And the Greek word air, it's, uh, it's a different form of the, uh, the same word, uh, it means the lower and denser air. It's not talking about going to heaven. It's talking about elevation above the earth, yes, to be with the Lord in rulership. But, and so shall we ever be. Here is the great hope. That we shall be there in the kingdom. Ruling with the Lord Jesus. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It's not the normal word forever. Uh, normally it would be aeon, for the age. Uh, but it means uh, at all times. It's there in chapter 5 and verse uh, well, verse 15, it says, See that uh, none, do, none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. All the time, follow that which is good, uh, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice all the time. Uh, and we just wonder uh, how much we do rejoice, brethren and sisters. We should be rejoicing all the time. Wondering at the greatness of the blessings that we have received in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, the chapter concludes with, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Verse 1 says, Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you, comfort you, by the Lord Jesus. Verse 10 Indeed we do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren. Uh, it's the same word again. And here, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What a comfort there is in the knowledge of the resurrection, brethren and sisters. The more real is our understanding of the fact that Jesus died and rose again. It's the guarantee that he will come and raise the dead. Paul told the Athenians that. And so the whole chapter is a chapter of comfort and strength, exhortation and exaltation. May it be, brethren and sisters, that we as the Thessalonians were exhorted to do, will elevate our minds and our way of life and prepare for the coming of the Master because one day it will come and may it be that in that day we all may be accounted worthy to join with him in his kingdom.